Hey, hey, time to shine today, squad. It's Scott Ferguson, and I have got a masterclass treat for you with my friend, Dr. Melinda Fouts. From the age of five, Dr. Melinda Fouts attended business and political meetings, meetings with her father. Instead of being given crayons and paper, she was told to listen, and listen she did. How he pulled that one off, I have no idea. But from these formative years of attending, the, attending these meetings, Dr. Faust became a shrewd observer of human behavior and could read those at the meeting well by noticing their body language. Early on, she could tell her father afterwards who was getting upset, who wasn't really listening, who disagreed, and so on. So basically, she was kind of a tattletale. Her unique <laughs> coaching style marries together her business acumen and her psychology degrees. She has worked with individuals and organizations for over 20 years, bringing a plethora of experiences and knowledge. She is an international executive coach, a Jungian-based psychotherapist, columnist, and feature contribute, contributor on Forbes Coaching Council, and a founder of Success Starts With You, which you have to check out that website, which will be in our show notes. So Dr. Melinda, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself, and if you could first, tell us your favorite color and why. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. My favorite color is white. White? Okay. white. Why is that? It goes with everything. It it's really, <laughs> it, it makes me shine. It does. And you can put any accessory with it and get away with it. I love that. I love it. So you have your roots about what you're doing with reading people going all the way back. Not to say you're older or anything, but going back to five years old. What got you? Tell us a little bit about the origins of Success Starts With You and even before that. Well, I have a PhD in psychology and had a thriving private practice in California and Colorado for over 20 years. And this global CIO of a Fortune 500 company, uh, this woman came to me and said, I need your help. And so we worked together for nine months. And she had what I call the one-two punch of blind spots. She came to me because a colleague said, your team is afraid of you because you're harsh. And so when we work together, what happens in the one-two punch of blind spots is we all get triggered and then we have a go-to style of responding. So when she would get triggered, she would pounce on her team. After nine months, because uncovering your blind spots is a challenge because the disco ball with all the little mirrors, you can get triggered that many different ways on one blind spot. Wow. So oftentimes she would say, I'd say, see, you've got, you're triggered. Your blind spot was triggered. She goes, why can't I see that? So after about nine months, she was catching it. We felt we were done. And at the end she said, I've worked with a lot of executive coaches. No one has helped me with this. You need to be an executive coach. I thought, you know, I'm ready for a change. I'm ready to turn the dial, use all the skills and tools I crafted over 20 years or more since I've been a shrewd observer of human behavior since I was five. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I thought, you know, it'd be nice to work at the corporate level, work with organizations because I have had a mission statement my whole life. And that is, especially in my work, if I can help one person have more inner peace, we will be st one step closer to world peace. And so the real drive of what I do is to make the world a better place. And that, that is, is strong. Wow. And I want to help relieve suffering. And there's a lot of suffering in organizations. This woman was suffering. And when she suffered, her team suffered. And so there is a cascading effect of this suffering. So I thought this way I can reach people at high levels. They can take the skills and tools I teach them and take it deep into the organization. That's, that's amazing. So you already covered kind of your aha moment. So you were a psycholo psychiatrist Psych or psychotherapist. psychotherapist. Okay. So you're a psycho psychotherapist and you're, were you catering to kind of a high end people at the time, like executive coaches or people that were doing it? Or was it just a plethora of, of backgrounds at the time? Carl Jung says there are no accidents and the people that need you will come to you. Mm -hmm. I don't turn anyone away. Beautiful. In fact, yes, I work with high end people yet. This young man read my article on Forbes about interviewing. Mm -hmm. He had passed the bar exam 
He'd been interviewing for eight months and was not getting a job offer. Okay. And he called me and he said, I know you probably won't help someone like me, but I just didn't know how I could get a job offer. I said, I'll help you. Uh-huh. I'm not going to turn anyone away. And I coached him four times and he got two job offers. Was this while you were practicing in California? Is this after you started Success Starts With You? This is after I started Success okay. Starts With You. Gotcha. And so if someone comes to me, I'm not going to turn them away. Oh, beautiful. So you help out every facet of every human being. That's, that, that is fantastic. So let me ask you something. You, you, you had a, a thriving practice and then you had your aha moment. And then you started success starts with you. What did your family think about that moving from a, a thriving business into your own? Um, well, I was always in my own private practice thriving mm -hmm. and I had a hundred percent support from my family. They thought it was Good. great. Um, it allows me to uh, be more flexible because I can coach anywhere on zoom or Skype. Mm -hmm. And I have a little grandbaby in California right now, so don't, I have a lot. Of, <laughs> I have a lot of support. Good, that's fantastic. So, give me a, a very challenging moment then, or maybe where you failed forward and with a great learning experience that you could share with our squad, because that, that's what they really like to hear. They like to hear the superhero comeback story sometimes that people have. Early, early, early on in my career, I had a supervisor. And I started my private practice and once in a week, he and I would meet together. I had this young client, a co-ed, and we met every Monday. And every Monday I heard the same story of failure. <laughs> I would do, set out some techniques, set out some plan. We'd set out everything for him to be successful this coming week. And every Monday I heard the same story. So one Monday getting ready to meet with my client. I said, I've had enough. <laughs> so I was young. I was new. He walked in and he started to tell the same story. And I gave him the timeout sign. I said, stop. Okay. I said, I want you to know you're really successful at one thing. And he sat up and he said, what? I said, you have chosen to fail life. I just want you to do it consciously now. Ooh. And he goes, you're right. I'm choosing to fail life. And like you just said, Scott, ooh. So he left and I ran over to my supervisor and I said, I think I just lost a client. And my client, my supervisor said, sit down. I said, do you know your strongest therapeutic tool? And I'm thinking, no. <laughs> and he said, you love your clients and they know you love them. I could never have done what you did, but you can pull out the two by four and knock them over the head because you love them. Sure. And that is how I came up with my tagline. Okay. Coaching with an iron fist and a velvet glove. Oh, love that. So, so, so how was that a failure though? What, what did it, was it something that's like something that you, a learning experience that you move forward with or like, I want, I want to get in the, the, the dark area, like something. Oh, I thought that was really dark for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, um, it really taught me many things. It taught me to very, be very conscious of the choices you're making. We're making choices and decisions all our waking hour. And yet most people go around unconsciously making decisions. And so it made me very aware to be conscious of what we have control over. Love it. We have okay. control over our thoughts, our words, our actions and reactions. Everything else is outside of our control. And yet we let everything outside of our control disrupt us. Very true. <laughs> and so it was, a, it was a big moment for me because I realized I could have said it differently to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to punch this young 20-something-year-old <laughs> with my iron fist. 
And it just taught me to be more, I can be tough, but I can choose better words. I can do it a little more graciously. You're that squad that is strong. She actually learned from something that actually ended up succeeding in the end, but she still learned a, a great valuable lesson, which is fantastic. So doctor, what do you think makes a great executive coach then? You have to know what to listen for. You have to be able to hear what they're not saying. You have to uncover their blind spot that it's a blind spot. So they're not aware of it. You have to know what triggers them and help give them the tools to come aware. So like this, when we get triggered, Scott, we have a kinesthetic charge in our body. Our gut tightens. Our fist can tighten. So a physiological response. Yes. And so people don't understand to start listening and to the messages from their body. So I bring awareness to that. A good executive coach helps bring awareness of what we all get stuck in a box. And that box consists of your beliefs, your perspectives, how you're raised. So the same global CIO I asked her what she could do differently in her team meetings. Okay. She said, I don't know. I said, you have a team that you've put together, so they've got to be pretty good. I said, when you have a team meeting, you go in that meeting, you lay out the parameters, the budget, whatever, and then you tell them you'll be back in 40 minutes and you want a decision. <laughs> Right. And she says, can I do that? I said, yes. And they want you to leave. <laughs> you need to go back to your office and make the decisions they can't make. Love it. So okay. her box was a belief system. Sure. That she has to stay in the meeting with her team. So a good executive coach uncovers these belief systems, uncovers these perspectives, uncovers whatever is getting in the way of them making good decisions. Okay. And I think that through that, which I talk a lot about with my clients that I coach, and I even have did a podcast that got huge reviews on it. Thank you, everybody out there that gave me them. Is it's the question, the power of the questions that you're asking them to dig in, to find this, to pull it, so you can use your expertise to help them level up. Correct? You would you agree? Right. Okay. Like I grade my clients on their answers. Okay. And so an answer. You have to grade that- yourself on the questions you ask almost. <laughs> Right? That's true. Yeah. So they, if they give an answer that's within their perspective and bo- box, sure. I'll say that's like a A minus B plus answer. <laughs> right. And so one time this one client said, how do I get an A plus out of you? And I said, when you give me a never before thought of answer. Love it. Make them dig. Make them dig deep. I love it. I love it. So you, you have a plethora of experience. You, are, you write for, contributed to Forbes. You are very well educated. If you were to look back, or if you could go back, or even write a letter to the 22-year-old Dr. Melinda Fouts, what would you tell her? Believe in yourself. Stop the negative self-talk, which I talk about in my book, Cognitive Enlightenment. We all have some negative self-talk that's playing 24-7, whether we hear it or not. And own your authentic self. Love it. Sorry. Hey, squad, I'm actually taking notes. So sorry about the pause there. So... With all of this experience, uh, no negative, and you're, you're, I wish somebody would have told me that when I was 22, you know? <laughs> so I, I, believe it or not, I had to grow in, in build a belief in myself a couple times in life. But what is the one big accomplishment that you still have not achieved that you're looking forward to achieving? That's a great question. (laughs) 
15 years ago, the Dalai Lama came and spoke in Aspen, and I don't remember what he said. <laughs> 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 However, there was questions afterwards, and this one woman said, asked, don't you just hate the Chinese for exiling you out of your own country? And he smiled his beautiful smile, and he said, yes, they've exiled me out of my country. And yes, they burn sacred texts and sacred temples. And then he taps his heart. And he said, so why would I let them in here and let them disrupt my inner peace? I walked away and I'm like, I'm not letting anyone or anything disrupt my inner peace ever again. Okay. It has been a journey, Scott. It has been a challenge. It is one of the main things I teach my clients about not allowing the driver in front of you cut you off disrupt your inner peace right and there's a story about me in my book about just that um so if i could attain that peace of mind it would be my greatest success that's amazing it's that a strong answer and you got to see the dalai lama that that's fantastic but you remember that one thing that we carry so much power within us that i found that people don't really unleash it you know there's the fable of you know we were actually gods walking the earth at one time long time ago and we were so destructive with our powers that they the god the supreme god took it away from us and, and they said, where are we going to put the power? And they said, high in a mountain? He said, no, someone will find it. Deep below the sea? No, one, someone will find it. He said, we're going to put it right in the person's heart. You know, let them right. find it. If they can find it there, they can conquer anything, which is what you just said was basically the exact same thing is what that fable. And so that, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that answer. So if you were to remove your cell phone out of the equation, what are three person, places, or things, three nouns that Dr. Melinda cannot live without? My beautiful daughter. Yay. My joy-filled granddaughter, who's 14 months. So we'll say family. Okay. The mountains. Ah. I hike in the mountains every morning before working with clients. That's fantastic. And... Everyone that I help. That's beautiful. Uh, that little, I guide. Giver. Gotcha. I love that. I love that. Tell me something, one thing that you've learned that's just blown your mind. Outside the Dalai Lama. I think I might have just answered it, but is there <laughs> anything else that's really just blown your mind? Yes. During this time of global and financial crisis, It saddens me how some people are choosing to behave mm. and not thinking about banding together as a neighbors and community. Sure. But the few very greedy and selfish and minimalistic thinking people who gobble up all the toilet paper or hand sanitizers Mm. And then turn around and try to sell it as a profit. Mm. I, I can't wrap my head around it, Scott. Understood. Um, we can take something like this and turn it into something for good. Sure. I was coaching my client in the UK this morning. And he said that this old man was walking to his car with his cart of groceries. And somebody knocked him over and stole his toilet paper. Mm. That's amazing. Really? It's, it's terrible. Yeah. But I think so, that what you're talking about is if we can touch one person at a time and find that inner peace with that person, it can spread out to the world. Tell, tell me something, Doc. What, what is your definition of a life well lived? A life well lived. I told this to my daughter when she was young, I said, if you can at the end of your life have no regrets, you will have a well-lived life. Love it, that's all that matters. Take chances and no regrets, that's fantastic. 
Okay, we're going to move into what we call our leveling up lightning round. You and I could, <laughs> you and I could have five to 10 to 20 minute conversations on each one, but I need your quickest answer with no ex explanation. I just want answers, okay? Five okay. to seven seconds on each one. So number one, what's the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Consciously be aware that you love everyone you meet love and work it. with. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. I meditate daily, I journal daily, and I hike. Love that. Other than your website, and of course, time to shine today.com, can you give us another website that is your go to to help you level up your life? I like Insight Timer. Insight Timer. Beautiful. People can, it has guided um, meditations, music meditations. Some are five minutes, some are two hours. I highly recommend it to everyone. Okay. Excellent. And give us, looks like you're a reader there. For anybody that's going to see this on our YouTube, if you're a reader there. Give me your one, one go-to book. Well, is it fair to say my book right now? That's fine. Love it. Cognitive, Cognitive enlightenment. enlightenment. Love it. And can we find that on Amazon? It's on Amazon. Okay. Got it. Absolutely. Perfect. What's your favorite charity or organization that you like to support? Uh, Lift Up here Lift in up. the Valley. Yeah. Beautiful. And last question. What is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? <laughs> I would say the 70s. 70s, I love. We can definitely hang out, Doc. All right, before <laughs> we kind of part, can you give us a knowledge nugget that you want the Time to Shine squad to walk away with? I'm going to be repeating myself. That's fine. Please do, because I got a plethora of notes. So Every please. day, every moment, we are making choices. All we have control over is our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Everything else is outside of our control, yet we let everything outside of us disrupt our inner peace. The more you can become conscious and aware, feel that kinesthetic charge and make a different choice, we will be a better world for that. Love that, that is so strong. And where can we find you, Doc? Um, you can call me on the phone. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if we want to put that in the show notes. We'll, we'll start with your website in the show notes. That'd be great. It's Melinda at, oh, it's uh, successstartswithyou.net is the website. Oh. And you can email me at Melinda at successstartswithyou.net. Okay. Um, pick up your book. Pick up my book. Write a, review, write a review on Amazon. And, um, yeah, like I said, I don't turn anyone away. I love it. I love it. All right, squad, you just heard like this, some super, super strong moving knowledge nuggets from Dr. Melinda Fouts. Um, I, I, I have so many notes, I can't even read them. But what she said about the one person at a time to find inner peace with one person at a time can lead to world peace. She rules with an iron fist and a velvet glove so she can work around anybody's situation we can control only our thoughts, words, and actions. She's a very humble, but yet still very hungry. She's always leveling up her health, leveling up your, her wealth. And Dr. Fouts, thank you so, so much for coming on. It's my pleasure. And I'm so, so grateful. Thank you, Scott. I'm grateful as well. Have a great day, hon.